This is the point class we created in last task, except that I have removed a couple of methods to focus on the content we will be covering in this lesson. In main program, you can see two point objects are created. Let's print one of the point and you will see that it is printed as class object followed by the memory address. This is not a proper format to represent a point object and that's why we created show point method which returns a string in the format we want to represent a point. Let's change the name of show point method to double underscore str double underscore which is a special or magic method. Now we can run the code again and see the same output. But where is the magic of this magic method? The magic we get from this dunder str method is that we don't need to call this. Rather we can simply write the object inside print statement and the print statement will look for this str method inside the class and will print its return string. So now we can print our object very much like any other built-in class objects like int, string, list, etc. There is another special method named as double underscore rep r double underscore that does the similar job. To see that, let's change str method to rep r and run the code again. And you will see the same output. Which means print statement executed rep r method. Before we discuss the difference between the two methods, let's define both of these with a slight difference in rep r method by changing comma to hyphen. Now if we run the code, we will see the output corresponding to str method and not the rep r method. It means print statement looks for str method first and if not found, it uses rep r as fallback method. The reason behind the two methods for similar result is basically a convention being followed. By convention, str method is for the end user and hence should return object in general readable format. On the other hand, rep r is meant for the developers for debugging purpose. And by convention, the rep r should represent the object in the form of python statement that can be used to create that object. So let's change the return string of rep r like that. We'll keep both methods and apply rep r manually by typing it. Now run the code and this is the output corresponding to rep r. You can see that we can copy this output and use it to create exactly the same object. Now let's create a list of these two points and try to print the list with just the str method inside the class. You will see that the objects are printed in old fashioned way although we have str inside the class. Now let's uncomment rep r method and rerun the code. And you will see the output is corresponding to rep r method. So that is one limitation of using str method that it will fail to print the objects inside list or any other sequence like tuple. So here I differ from the convention because I use the sequence a lot in my program and I want the objects inside them be displayed in my desired format. So generally instead of str method, I prefer to define rep r in my class. Let's quickly see the main program of last task where we used for loop and show point to display each point in the list. Now this can be done in much simpler way by printing the list directly. You can see much better output format too. Now let's add this method inside our student class on the left side while the main program is on the right side with three students. We will define rep r returning the last name followed by a hyphen and the numeric part of the registration number which is the last two elements of the reg string.
we can test it on a single student and list of student One more feature I would like to add in student class is that I will create a class level list named as all students which is empty. Inside init method I will append the created student into this list. Once done that in main program whenever a student is created he is added into the list and we can simply access that from the class. That's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.